I'm Melanie Hallam, and at Chidley Hume School, I would have been known as Melanie Wilson. I left Chidley Hume School um, after sixth form in 1992 and went on to Leeds University to study a combined science degree. So the two, the two subjects I took forward, um, having studied A-levels, were maths and geography. And I guess I chose to do maths because I was okay at it. And I chose geography alongside because I thought it would just be a slightly lighter subject to study um, aside from the maths. So at Leeds University, in year one and year two of your combined science degree, you are um, required to take a third subject. So when I got to university, I picked up my third subject and chose to do statistics. So for year one and year two, I studied maths, geography and statistics and um, really enjoyed the different aspects of the university life. I had a great field trip for geography. Um, and then in year three, um, my final year, it obviously gets a bit more serious and you are um, asked to take forward the two subjects that you want your final degree to be in. So I then took forward maths and statistics as my final degree um, because one, they were probably my stronger subjects and, um, and secondly, I thought maths and statistics would sound perhaps a more focused degree um, on my CV for the areas of work that I was looking to go into. So I was interested in doing something in finance, although I really didn't know at that point what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to use, use my maths um, in a career somewhere. So I suppose back then one of the obvious choices would have been something like accountancy. Um, and I did dabble with the milk round at the end of university and did a couple of um, interviews for training contracts. But um, I wasn't offered a training contract with any of the accountancy firms. Um, and to be honest, my heart probably wasn't really into um, that area. So I carried on sort of searching through job adverts, um, looking at where maths could be used in different, um, different organisations. And um, I had, I, I was offered a job, my first sort of job offer came from a company in London, um, a mail order company working in their credit risk department. So an area that is quite unknown, I'd never really heard about it before, but the more I sort of read into it, the more I was interested. So I had this job offer in London and I think I had one last interview lined up for a company in Nottingham. Um, I wasn't massively keen on the idea of going to London, I didn't know it very well, but I guess I was interview weary and thought, you know what, I'm just going to take this offer, I'm not going to bother with this other interview. Um, but my father advised me to take the interview in Nottingham it might be the one. So I took his advice and I went to Nottingham and I'm so pleased that I did, although saying that I don't know where I would be <laughs> otherwise. Um, but I was interviewed in Nottingham by a company called CCN. They were the second largest employer in Nottingham after Boots, the chemist. Um, and I was, it was the first interview I walked out of feeling like I really wanted to work there. Um, they sort of, they got me in the interview to do some sort of puzzle and work some things out. And we talked about it and the questions they were asking um, were really interesting. So um, I was fortunate to be given um, the job offer. And I then moved myself to Nottingham for three years, um, working for CCN, which then became Experian. Um, so Experian, you may well have heard of, they are one of the largest credit reference agencies in the UK. Um, and I was lucky enough to work in their, um, the worldwide department, so Europe, Middle East, Africa. Um, and my job was to 
build mathematical models to predict the performance of credit card customers or loans or mortgages. So our customers would be various different banks around the world um, and they would give us their data to model and then we would create um, what we call the scorecard um, and then go and present that to them and help them assist with it, assist them in implementing that scorecard and monitoring it um, and using all the software that we also sold um, to help manage their credit risk. So I was really fortunate um, to work with banks in Istanbul. Um, I went to Athens, I spent a bit of time in Dublin um, and also had a great trip to Monaco uh, where Experian had gone into forces with another company, Scorex. So um, loved that job, really, really enjoyed it, but wanted to head back to Manchester um, to live uh, back here in my home area. Um, so after three years with Experian, um, and back then it was quite um, a routine um, idea that people got headhunted from one job to another. So I was headhunted from Experian to a company in Manchester. Um, and headhunting, headhunting might sound a bit flash, but really it's not. Uh, somebody gives you a call, just gives you a little bit of an ego boost, says they've heard about you and the great work you're doing, and they've got an organisation that really wants to speak to you. Um, anyhow, I moved back to Manchester, and as it happens, I went to work for um, Experian's parent company called Great Universal Stores Mail Order Company in Manchester, um, which, was, which was great. It got me back to Manchester. Um, there wasn't any travel involved. It was based in... Um, offices in Manchester, not quite as um, luxurious that, as I was used to in Nottingham, um, but met some interesting people, learnt some things, um, and from there I then moved on, I was offered a job with National Australia Group. So National Australia Group owned um, Yorkshire Bank and Clydesdale Bank at the time um, in the UK, and um, the job was based back in Leeds where obviously I was at uni. So um, again in retail banking, so in the retail banking arm, um, credit risk management. So rather than um, acting as a consultant providing data, modelling data for customers, this was more of an internal job. Um, so I decided to take the role, however but I had just then um, met and fallen in love with somebody in Manchester. So I decided to take the role in Leeds, but commute from Cheshire to Leeds every day. So I used to get up very early, drive to Staley Bridge, jump on the train, walk up to the offices, um, do my day's work, and then back again. So it was probably two hours door to door every morning, two hours every evening. After a while, um, I had sort of got embedded in the role and was allowed to work from home one day a week. So I used to travel Monday, Tuesday, work from home on a Wednesday, um, and then back on this Thursday, Friday. Sometimes I'd thrive, but um, it was a good, it was a great experience. I didn't have children back then, and I was younger, um, so it was it was fine. It was I was able to do it. Um, so after about two years of doing that commute, I was then offered a job back in Manchester with Citibank. So again, working in their um, risk management team um, internally, uh, based in Exchange Square in Manchester. Um, and I went to work there and I absolutely loved it. I've loved all of, all of the jobs I've done. Um, and I worked in their risk management team. I had a team of analysts that reported into me, so I started to learn more about um, human resources, um, deployment of staff, working on projects together, um, annual appraisals, um, and we launched some quite big projects for Citibank at the time. I was able to go over to New York and spend some time with the Citibank uh, team over in New York, learning um, from their expertise. 
and brought back some ideas for um, the UK market. So one of those ideas that I was involved in was launching the first pre-approved credit card into the UK market, which um, was very successful for Citibank, um, made them a lot of money. And uh, another project I was involved in was um, implementing a quite aggressive and proactive credit, um, credit card, uh, credit line strategy which again was something that they were doing in the US, but no one else in the UK was doing it, um, where we basically drilled into the data of our um, credit card customers to find out where it was going to be most profitable to increase credit lines. Um, so really interesting stuff and, uh, and really enjoyed it. By then, um, I was pregnant with my first child and um, an opportunity came along to start my own business. So uh, my husband, who is a charter surveyor and works, has a local business, came home one day and said, there's some land up for sale, uh, very close to where we live, um, some farmland, a few barns and um, big field. And there is already planning permission on the land to open a children's nursery. Childcare is not something I had any um, experience of at all. However, I had often threatened that if I was to start my own business, wouldn't that be a good business to run? Because you could involve um, running a business uh, along with um, having your family around you. So basically, that's what happened. Um, while I was on maternity leave, I spent... Um, six months sort of writing a business plan, doing some research, some market research, speaking to the banks, um, getting some finance in place, um, and launched or registered um, the nursery business in 2006. Um, we then built from scratch the nursery building, and my husband um, was involved in that build, so it was difficult um, period because we literally woke up in the morning talking about this project went to sleep at night talking about the project. Um, uh, learned a lot, very stressful, lots of deadlines. We knew we wanted Ofsted to come around and inspect the premises so that we could open and we had an opening um, date for November 2007. So we opened our doors um, at the end of November 2007 uh, to our first customers. Um, there was a team of, there was myself and three other staff members who um, had employed a, a nursery manager who started with me in the September time. So we had a good six to eight weeks together where we wrote all um, the, the, the operational plan of the nursery um, worked out exactly how we wanted to run it. I'd already in my business plan um, thought of some unique selling points for the nursery um, and uh, thought about how we're going to market it. So we, we, had, uh, we had that time together before we opened. And then when we opened, there was a team of four of us and we basically did everything from cooking, cleaning <laughs> and looking after the children. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was a learning, a huge learning curve for me because I'd never been into a nursery, never worked in a nursery. I had um, never even put my children in a nursery. Um, so yeah, hard work, a lot of hard work and quite stressful in those early days. Um, but then as time goes on, you know, you're constantly learning. Um, I had a lot of skills from my previous jobs in finance um, which I could transfer over to this new um, industry. So things like a management of staff, um, you know, and, and just I knew the standards I wanted to set. I um, employed, started to employ more and more people as we got busier. Um, I was heavily involved with meeting all of those staff members and training those staff members. Um, and, uh, and it's it's down to sort of their um, great skills. I learned to employ uh, quite a diverse um, population of people 
So old people, young people from different backgrounds, um, some who are new to childcare, some who have been teachers for a long time, um, but all bringing um, different skills to the table and it's utilising those people and, and their skills and empowering them um, you know, to use their own initiative that I think has um, seen us well through the years. Um, but one thing that I would say, um, which has kept us sort of going, the, the childcare industry has changed a lot um, in the past 12 years that I've been involved in it. Um, it's a lot harder these days, there's a lot more costs involved that perhaps weren't there when we first started. Um, but we've managed to keep ourselves viable because we are good at adapting to change. Um, so every couple of years we will have changed something quite drastically in the nursery. So for example, when we first opened, we had a plan of you know the different classrooms and ages that we thought we would have in the nursery. But then within the first year, it seemed quite obvious that the demand coming through the door um, was different. So we adapted our rooms accordingly and changed that business plan. Um, we are located opposite a quite big uh, pharmaceutical company called AstraZeneca, who then um, years later moved their site down to Cambridge. So again, there was an adjustment for us. Our marketing strategy needed to change um, in order for us to keep our occupancy rates high. Um, and there's some various different regulations that the government have brought in that, again, you have to really think about how um, you can implement those while um, sustaining your business. So, again, I've really enjoyed um, the time there. It's very unusual. So for 12 years, we've been, I've been working, running this business. Um, a couple of years ago, um, we decided to build an extension. We, for a long time, wanted to find a second site. Um, but our business model um, involves us owning the building and the land uh, and the business inside. So we found it really difficult to find another site that was as good as the one we have, um, that was located and had all the out outdoor space that we sell ourselves on. So instead, um, we decided to extend our existing building um, and increase capacity by 50%. Um, so the past couple of years have been uh, a challenge again because we've had to then mark, go out marketing ourselves um, to fill those extra spaces. And we're just there. Um, we just got there. And then, of course, this virus has come along and has shaken up everyone's business. Um, so, which is why I'm now sort of sat at home uh, dealing with everything from my laptop. Um, but um, I know that we have got such a good um, business behind us that we will survive this. I've got a great team of people who um, the government are very generously uh, going to be paying 80% of their wages while they are sat at home staying safe. So interesting times, um, but just really um, to get across that whatever you might decide to do in your first career, um, you know, the, the skills that you'll learn can be transferable to lots of different careers. The one piece of advice I would probably give is just make sure that when you get up each morning, you're going to a job that you enjoy doing. Um, I can't imagine how people can get up and, and go to work if they don't enjoy it. Um, and if you don't enjoy what you're doing, go and try something else um, because you just you just never know what path um, or where they might lead to. So um, I hope that has been a little bit of insight into how you can swap from one career to another successfully. Um, and you don't always have to know at this stage at school um, what you want to do. Um, it might be something that you've never heard of before. So good luck.